Hey everyone, Jamie here, and in this video, I wanted to take a look at some of my favorite or most used apps of 2022. Now, this is something that I've been doing uh, first in written form over on technicalcafe.com, and now uh, more recently over the past few years in video form here on the Technical Cafe YouTube channel. Uh, but this is something that I've been doing uh, for a number of years, and I really like doing it in order to see what apps I've been using over the course of the past year or so, uh, as well as uh, what apps I've been using in years past. It's kind of cool to be able to look back and you know see how things have changed year over year. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is start off by showing you what phone I've been using. In this case, uh, it's the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Uh, and then what we're going to do is go through 10 of my favorite apps in no particular order um, that I've been using over the course of the past year or so. Uh, so I thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's talk about the phone that I'm using, and that is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I upgraded in, uh, I believe it was September, from an iPhone 13 Pro Max via the Apple iPhone upgrade program. Uh, and in this case, the phone is the black version uh, with a uh, navy blue Apple silicone case. Uh, I will say I do like the case. It's, you know, nice and grippy um, without being, you know, too grippy on your pockets when you're trying to pull the phone in and out. Um, and additionally, the phone, uh, the case does offer, you know, a decent amount of protection. Obviously, it's not going to offer the kind of protection like an OtterBox case will. Um, but this phone has saved my, uh, this case rather has saved my phone from a number of drops. Uh, in this case, you can see there's a little dent up there from when I dropped it on uh, concrete the other day while going into work. Um, so I do like this phone and I do like to upgrade my iPhone every year. Uh, mainly because of the cameras. Um, I, I find the iPhone is the, my main photography device and main video capture device. Uh, so being able to capture photos and videos of family, friends, and you know, just when I'm out and about, um, using the best camera technology available is, is pretty important to me. Um, and it's also nice to be able to have the latest hardware and, and be able to try out um, you know, what the, the newest stuff is from Apple. So uh, I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'm a member of the Apple Upgrade Program. Um, and prior to that, uh, from September backwards, I was using the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Um, but enough with the phone. Let's go ahead and get into the apps, the, my favorite apps of 2022, or most used apps of 2022. And in no particular order, here they are. All right, so up first in the list here is Apollo, which is one of my favorite Reddit apps, and it's an app that I've been using for a number of years now. And I really like Apollo because it's a very polished app. It gives you a very um, good experience when you're browsing Reddit on your phone, uh, and it offers a variety of different features and customizations that you can use to make the app more of your own. So uh, you can go ahead and scroll through and see what the Reddit experience looks like here. Um, you can customize things like gesture-based navigation, so swiping you know, left and right on different things. If you go into a post, you can see that um, tapping and holding does one thing, swiping does another thing. Uh, and if you go over into the settings section, you can see here that there are a whole bunch of customizations that you can do um, anything from appearance to notifications notifications, uh, even to the app icon, if that's something that you're interested in changing. And then uh, also there's a whole bunch of different gestures that you can customize uh, based on what you know how you'd like the app to be set up. Uh, so Apollo is one of my favorite Reddit apps. It's an app I definitely recommend you check out. Uh, there are some paid upgrades within the app, and I would highly recommend them. The developers actually um, pretty active in the Apollo subreddit from what I understand. Uh, so you can probably easily get in contact with him as well if you uh, have any questions or would like to share any feedback. Uh, so Apollo for Reddit is uh, the first app in the list and definitely an app I would recommend you check out if you are a regular Reddit user. All right, the next app in the list here is HeartWatch, which is an app that you can use uh, to track a bunch of different health metrics, including heart rate, um, activity data, uh, and things like that. Uh, and I really like it mainly for the heart rate features. I don't really use much of the activity tracking and whatnot, but I find it pretty interesting to be able to view a nice graph of what your heart rate looks like over time. So uh, let's go ahead and click on this random Tuesday here. And you can see that this is uh, a view of my heart rate over the course of that day. So I wore my watch for 12 hours and 19 minutes, and my average heart rate was 80 beats per minute. It gives you a nice chart here of um, you know, what zone your heart rate was in, so elevated, resting, uh, low, things like that. And then what I really like to see is just, uh, just for fun, it's kind of interesting to see what your heart rate was throughout the day. And you can kind of correlate it to activity. So these green bars up here are your activity. Uh, and then the dots within this graph here are your heart rate. So um, you can kind of scroll over and see what heart rate, what your heart rate was at a given time. And, you know, sometimes it's fun to correlate it to, you know, I was, I was doing a, a brisk walk. So my heart rate went up or something like that. So uh, this is just an app that I really like to be able to use to keep track of that information. Um, there's all sorts of graphs and uh, different, um, metrics and stuff that you can view, but we definitely recommend it if you're interested in keeping track of your heart rate and other uh, health information. All right, so up next in the list is something that everyone should probably have, and that is a password manager. Uh, and my password manager of choice is 1Password. Uh, so I really like that 1Password makes it simple and easy to uh, log and keep track of all of your usernames, passwords, as well as other information. It doesn't even have to be um, login credentials anymore. You can store things like uh, secure notes, credit card information, um, 
crypto wallet information, uh, licenses, things like that. Uh, and it makes it really easy to just be able to go to one spot, type in a master password and just get access to all of your passwords. Uh, one password syncs to the web, it syncs to iPhone and Android, uh, and it also syncs to um, Google Chrome and um, computer apps as well. So Mac, Windows um, and, and things like that. So. If you wanted to create a password, let's say we wanted to log an Apple ID, you go ahead and just enter in your information uh, and then it gets stored in your 1Password vault. I won't show you mine just because uh, my passwords are in there, but um, uh, it's basically, it's a great app to use if you're looking for a way to manage multiple usernames and passwords. Uh, there are different subscription options as well. So if you have a family and you wanna be able to share passwords between each other, or maybe you uh, have a job where you need to share passwords with other employees, uh, there's definitely ways to do that as well. Uh, and the prices are pretty reasonable. So if you're looking for a way to manage your passwords, definitely would recommend that you check out 1Password. All right, so up next in the list here is Calendars 5 by Riedel. Uh, and if you haven't heard of Riedel before, they make a bunch of different apps that are really great. So I'd recommend you check them out. Um, but Calendars 5 is an app that I've been using for a while now. And I really like how it offers a bunch of different features uh, to make managing your schedule easy, uh, especially when you're on the go. So uh, one of the things that I really like about this app is that it offers a bunch of different views for your events. So right now I have it in month view, which I really like because it kind of gives you a nice overview of what you have going on for the next month. Uh, and you can swipe between the months and whatnot. Um, but there are other views as well, such as week and day view, um, uh, list view, and then you can also view tasks as well. Um, but what's really cool about this app is that it offers natural language processing. So you can, for example, say plan my week tomorrow at 3 p.m. and it'll know to add the event tomorrow. In this case, it'll be New Year's Day uh, at 3 p.m. So you don't have to type any of that information in manually. Just say what you want it to do, what time you wanted that, and even where you want it. And it'll add that information into the proper fields uh, for an event. So. Calendars 5, I don't believe is free when I bought it. I don't know if they have a free version now, uh, but I would definitely recommend you check it out if you're a Google Calendar user or any other type of calendar user. Um, it's a great app, would highly recommend it, and it, uh, and it works very well. All right, so the next app in the list is Old School RuneScape Mobile by Jagex. And if you're not familiar with RuneScape, uh, it's an MMORPG that's been around for probably 15 plus years at this point, uh, and is a game that I've been playing for maybe about as long, maybe just a little bit shorter than that. Um, at least since the mid 2000s or when I was in middle school anyway. Um, but Old School RuneScape Mobile is a great way to play the game on the go. Uh, you have access to a great touch interface that gives you all sorts of controls, whether managing your inventory or um, what your character is wearing, levels, music, uh, attack types, things like that, friends lists, uh, and it's really a great way to play um, and control your character on the go. Um, and what's nice is they also have an iPad app, so if you want to play on a little bit bigger of a screen, you can certainly do that. And then you can just log out and pick back up where you left off on a computer if that's something that you're interested in. All right, so the next app in the list here is ForeFlight, which is an EFB or electronic flight bag app. And it's mainly useful to people who are pilots or people who are studying to become pilots. Although I suppose you could probably use it if you're also just interested in aviation in general. Um, it starts at about $120 a year for the Basic Plus subscription and goes up to uh, more expensive than that if you need more features. Uh, but even at the Basic Plus level, it's packed with features that are useful for flight planning, uh, that are useful in flight uh, and useful for um, you know logging flights and things like that. So uh, it has maps information for you know the whole United States and you can uh, download other areas as well you can view information about uh, airports so in this case we just clicked on Nashville International you can get weather information contact information for um, you know ATIS ASOS ground tower um, all sorts of weather information runway information um, and you know you can view nearby airports uh, the MOS the TAF um, procedural information, NOTAMs, things like that. So it's packed full of information that's useful if you're, um, you know, flight planning, you can actually go into the map, you can um, plan, uh, put in a flight plan, and then, you know, you can get information on how to fly that flight plan, uh, what headings to follow, things like that. Uh, and when you're in flight, you can actually use it kind of like a GPS, though. I wouldn't rely on it as your main GPS, but it certainly comes in handy um, as a secondary means of navigation instead of having to bring around paper charts and things like that. Um, so yeah, for flight, if you're interested in aviation or maybe um, doing flight training or uh, are a pilot already, I would highly recommend you check it out. All right, so the next app in the list is also aviation related, and that is Watch Me Tar. Uh, and this is an app that I like to use from time to time um, when planning flights or just kind of when I want to know what the weather is. Um, it basically gives you weather information for uh, any number of airports. So you can search for an airport, you can go ahead and find the nearest airport, uh, or you can pick a favorite airport that you might have already entered. Um, if we go ahead and click the nearest airport here, it'll bring you the nearest airports uh, in my region, which are Nord Airport, Boston, uh, 
uh, Logan Airport, Taunton Airport, Bedford Airport, and so on and so forth. Uh, but let's go ahead and click on Boston here, and it'll give you all types of information regarding the weather um, taken from the METAR. So um, you get the wind, you get the visibility, um, sky condition, temperature, uh, barometric pressure, or your altimeter setting, um, and then you can actually get the actual um, uh, METAR that's not decoded uh, below if you'd like. And then you have the TAF information as well, which is nicely uh, decoded and laid out for you uh, if you don't feel like actually um, going through and, and deciphering it yourself. So if you're interested in flying, interested in uh, aviation weather, would definitely recommend Watch Mitar. It's also available as an app on the phone, um, which basically gives you the same functionality, but I mainly use it on the watch. So the next app on the list is another aviation-related app, though this time you don't necessarily have to be a pilot, student pilot, or even an aviation enthusiast in order to take advantage of all of its features. So this is Flight Radar 24, and it's actually a website as well as a mobile app. And what it allows you to do is take a look at a map and see what airplanes are flying in the area around you, or anywhere else in the world for that matter. So in this case, here's the United States. You can see that there are a whole bunch of airplanes flying around uh, in the skies above us. And if you wanted to take a look at a particular plane, so let's zoom in here to like New York, and let's take a look at this JetBlue flight here. If we tap on it, it'll give us information about the, um, the flight, such as where it's coming from, uh, how long it has been in the air for, and where it's going, and how long uh, until it arrives. We can also look at information like its calibrated altitude, ground speed, and if we tap this More Information button, you can see a, a couple pictures of the airplane. Uh, you can see more information about the airplane's type, registration, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if we go ahead and uh, click on that plane again, you can see uh, the path that it took to get from uh, its um, its, entry, uh, its starting point in Los Angeles to its destination in New York. Uh, so this is pretty cool. You can basically go ahead and see a 3D view of what the plane looks like when it's flying. You can see its route uh, without anything else in the way. Um, you can follow the airplane. You can share the airplane's information. And then there's all different types of features as well, like alerts, um, upgrades to get more features, things like that. You can search for a particular airplane if you know uh, its um, call sign uh, and things like that. So it's kind of cool to be able to look up in the sky and say, hey, I wonder where that airplane's coming from, launch the app, uh, and then um, find out the information you're looking for. So would highly recommend it. It's free with paid upgrades, and uh, that is Flight Radar 24. So coming up next in the list is an app that likely needs no introduction, and that is the default reminders app that comes uh, bundled on Apple devices. So I really like this app because it's simple, it's easy to use, and it syncs across all of my Apple devices. So in my case, I use an iPhone. Uh, I have an Apple Watch that I'll oftentimes use, you know, either if when I'm driving or out and about and I want to set a reminder without pulling my phone out, I'll oftentimes just use Siri to set a reminder, and then I can pull it back up later on my uh, iPhone or MacBook or iPad uh, to see what it was that I had to do. Um, I've tried a whole bunch of other reminders and to-do list apps and things like that over the years, but I always find myself coming back to the default reminders app. Um, it has just enough features for me. I don't really use uh, you know, any of the crazier organization features and whatnot um, that are available in some of these really high-powered apps. Uh, so I think the, the default reminders app has just enough features for me. You can set an app, uh, a reminder for certain times, certain locations, certain dates. Um, you can organize reminders into lists uh, and all sorts of features that I don't even take advantage of. Uh, but this is an app that I've been using. Um, I use it pretty frequently, been using it for years, uh, and it does the job for me. So the last app in the list, though certainly not the least, is the Dark Sky Weather app for iOS. Uh, now this app I decided to put last because it's actually being sunsetted. Uh, the last day that you can use this app is today, New Year's Eve, December 31st, uh, 2022. Uh, and that is because Apple actually purchased this app from its developers uh, a while back and have integrated its features into the default Apple weather app. So. Um, for those who have used Dark Sky in the past, you'll be able to see that uh, it, you know, it had this nice graph here that gives you weather information throughout the day. You can choose which type of information you want to see, like precipitation rate, wind speed, gust speed, things like that, uh, humidity, UV index, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a map feature that you can view, and you can get a forecast uh, you know, dating out uh, about a week or so. Uh, I really liked using this app. It was nice. It gave you a nice view of the weather, um, told you what the weather was like for the next 50 minutes or so if it was raining, um, and just really came in handy. It was a, it was a nice weather app, um, though sad to say, today is the last day that you can use it. Um, that said, a lot of its features have been integrated into the Apple weather app, and hopefully will continue to be able uh, to make use of them um, uh, in the future. So there you have it. That is my list of favorite apps for 2022. 
I'd really like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch this video, for liking, for commenting, for subscribing, and I hope everybody had a very great holiday season uh, over the past few weeks, and I hope that everybody has a great, happy, healthy, and safe uh, new year, a great 2023, uh, and I look forward to making content for you. I know I haven't really been putting out much content, um, but if you're interested in seeing what I'm up to regularly, feel free to check me out on Twitter, twitter.com slash jamiemcg, Instagram at jamiemcg, uh, and also on Twitch. Um, if you haven't seen uh, any of the Twitch streams I do, I've been doing some streaming from time to time. Uh, I am at tcjamie on Twitch. Uh, so I look forward to seeing everybody, and uh, I hope everybody has a great new year.